Geologists estimate that the MMSE was first released during the Cretaceous period, also known as 1975. And that's one of the big advantages of this test. It's been around for so long that most healthcare professionals will know what you're talking about. The colossal disadvantage of using the MMSE is that the copyright is being enforced. In order to use it, you're supposed to register with a company, buy the test manual for $84, and pay for the forms, which comes out to $1.78 per form. That's not attractive. If you set the cutoff point for dementia as a score of 24 out of 30, the sensitivity is about 85% and the specificity is about 90%, which is good, but is it $1.78 good? So do yourself a favor, spend the money on a song you like, and just administer a mini cog for free. <clears throat> Let's take a look at one. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it's longer than the mini cog, which if you're busy, isn't great. And I'd say that it's harder than the minicog, which again is a double-edged sword. Many of the forms that I've seen break the different sections into categories of memory, which may be useful if you're being technical about the definition of dementia. The MMSE devotes 10 out of 30 points to orientation. Contrast that with the slums and the mocha. There's nothing wrong with this, but note that your delirious patients may do very poorly on this section. Note that the minicog and the MMSE ask for three item recall, whereas the slums and the mocha ask for five items. I don't know about you, but I think that five item recall is pretty tough. I mean, if I could remember five items, I'd probably apply to med school. <laughs> Those of you from Hawaii may notice some cultural biases. In Hawaii, we don't really make a big deal about seasons, so this question isn't very popular. We don't talk much about counties, so you'll notice that this form actually replaces county with island. No one around here says the phrase, no ifs, ands, or buts. So I've actually started to ask people to repeat, Maui no ko'oi. And anecdotally, my patients seem to do better with that. And I mean, I can't argue with Leslie. Let's take a look at this attention slash calculation section. To me, subtraction and spelling world backwards are very different skills but somehow they're interchangeable here? Now, which one of these do you tend to ask? I've discovered that most of my colleagues can't do simple arithmetic, so we ask the spelling question a lot. I'd like to take some time to challenge the notion that scoring the spelling question is easier than doing arithmetic. Although many trainees tell me that they're very familiar with the MMSE, most of them have never seen this standardized scoring rubric. It's complicated. To highlight some examples, DLWOR gives you three points because it's a reversal of two letters. DORLW gives you two points because it's a reversal of three letters? Wait, what? And LDRWO is worth one point? And this doesn't even enumerate all possible outcomes. What if someone says six letters? Do you lose a point for that? What if someone says a letter that's not part of the word world? So a lot of trainees see this document and all the other random idiosyncrasies built into the scoring and they tell me, Matthew, this is too much. I can't remember all this. How am I ever going to be able to score an MMSE correctly ever again? This is only my opinion, so take this with a grain of salt. But I'd say that the most important thing you can do as a clinician is to be internally consistent with the way you score the exam. You can't say, well, Rachel is my friend, so I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt on these answers, but I'm going to be really strict when I score Jamie's test. And the way you score the exam needs to be consistent from year to year. The standardized scoring rubric is really important if you're doing a big research study and have tens of thousands of patients who are being examined by a bunch of different people. In this setting, it's imperative that all the examiners score the exam exactly the same way. In contrast, remember that as a clinician, using this exam as a screening tool, it's not going to be perfect no matter how dogmatic you're being. So at some point, you'll just need to use your clinical judgment and decide on your own whether or not you think the patient has dementia. Okay, any questions? Huh? Oh, yeah, uh, hold on one sec. Jimmy, bring me a calculator. <laughs> 